Hello. <laughs> so, Betty Dodson. <laughs> yes, darling. Someone has a birthday coming up. Ah, stop with that. This August 24th, Betty Dodson is going to be 90 years old, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. Even if you had a shitty, boring life and accomplished nothing, you made it to 90. And without ever being sick. And I was going to say, then and on top of it, good health. Totally. Lots I'm, of fun and pleasure. <laughs> lots of orgasms with myself. Wonderful experiences oh, and all of course, over the world. Of course, our workshops, it's, that's a big shot in the arm. Oh yeah, and then we'll add the body sex layer and how wonderful that is. Changing the world, reintroducing yeah. the electric vibrator, writing a feminist classic, an international bestseller <coughs> about self-love. <laughs> I have had a very successful life. And you're still living and you're happy, healthy. And still doing it. Do you still have orgasms at 90? <laughs> well, yes. As a matter of fact, they're getting better. I don't mean better than ever, but I mean they're still, they're very good. <laughs> okay, so break us down. I think it would be interesting for people to understand what it looks like, what, what a healthy sexual orgasm looks like on a regular basis when you're 90 years old? Well, it's whatever you are. But uh, just tell us about yours. Okay. You want to just know about mine. Uh, I get in the mood. I'm either thinking about something. The other day I was looking out the window and I was doing some breathing and I thought about Kishka. Mm -hmm. I love that dog. So I you got a, a little arousal going mm -hmm. there? <laughs> felt that little tingle <laughs> and I just because I was at the window and that's what we did we sat at the window and breathed together so I really like went into the details of it thinking it and really so a past memory yeah yeah and it was so sweet and I could feel the sex energy starting to move and by that I mean I don't mean it's a, a warmth in the pelvis and the clit wants to be touched you it, want to touch yourself yeah it's calling up <laughs> <laughs> so I put the towel on the bed I get my sex toy my dildos my vibrator the lube and first I just lie on the bed and stretch out Ugh. it always feels good to lay down on a bed Ugh. Take some nice deep breaths. And then I start to think, create a scenario in my mind. And then I pick up my vibrator. What was the scenario you created this past masturbation session? I used the dog again. <laughs> dog fucking gets her every time. <laughs> and only but a goodie. <laughs> he was a very special animal. Okay, so then you get your vibrator. Yes. And I may have finished with the dog and moved on to a, a scenario of people or whatever. It's, um, but that kicked it off. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for us to fantasize, use our mind to think of something, to, to create a scenario. To arouse our bodies. <clears throat> it's so obvious to me is you don't just walk around and all of a sudden your body's like, I want it. It's about your mind. It's, yeah, it's really turning yourself on mentally and then adding the physical. But the mental has to come first. I mean, you really have to f have some kind of interest. So, um, so I have my fantasy and I start doing my hands manually. I just feel myself. Sometimes I rub all over my body, touching. And then when I get a little Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. <laughs> ah. I turn the vibrator on. Then it's just a slow dance at the beginning. Just, you know. Tease yourself a yeah, little. Yeah, just like, fucking around. And the fantasy builds and the, and the physical energy and the sex builds. And the next thing you know, oh, 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 I'm coming. And it feels so good. Oh, it's such a release. I can't imagine what my life would be like without orgasm. 
It's such a nice feeling. And then I sometimes take a little nap. Ah, oh, I love that. In between, you kind of like take the vibrator off, you close your eyes, just bask in that glow. No, I mean at the end. After you've had a couple. Mm. I'm all relaxed and I turn it off. I get under a cover, I pull a cover over me. Sometimes I pull a pillow on top of me and I just get warm and nestle down and maybe doze a bit. It's a lovely, it's a lovely date with myself is really what it is. And then when I'm over with it, I'm over with it. I don't have to worry about anybody's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and I go about my evening or day or whatever it is, having had a nice orgasm. So what does orgasm do to our bodies? Well, sometimes people say it's a reset. Um, and I think sometimes it can be. Like when there's a lot of stress going on around you, it's definitely coping skill. It's kind of like get that reset, get that orgasm. I feel like whatever our collective consciousness is, it's like when you have an orgasm, you tap into that because you go so deep within yourself. And when you're that deep within yourself, you connect to everyone else. Everything else. Everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's nice. <coughs> Is yeah. that how you feel after you orgasm? Connected? Like what's the word you would use? Um, released. Untethered. Untethered. Free. Freedom. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I think so. Personal, <laughs> personal freedom. But I usually then can just lie there for a few minutes. Sometimes I will doze off. Sometimes I'll take a full-blown nap. And sometimes I'll jump up and get busy. Yeah, sometimes you're energized after, right? Sometimes you're exhausted yeah. and sometimes you're energized. Yeah. So there's all kinds, you know, either you get more energized mm -hmm. or you get more relaxed or you get happier. Always get happier. It's never bad. <laughs> it's never it, that's bad not to my, come. That's not my experience. <laughs> <laughs> if we would just remember that the most important de-stressing thing we can do it's just take a moment and have an orgasm with yourself. And it's free. <laughs> no charge. Okay, go do it.